little thongs and this this just like asses over here and this big asses over here and there's and it's just ass, ass, ass everywhere. Hello everyone, my name is Angelo and I am an OG passport brother who brought his fiance here from Vietnam to come live in, in the United States. And we ultimately, we got married. She has a green card and we are planning the next phase of our life within the next two or three years when we plan to relocate back to uh, Southeast Asia. Now, I know a lot of Passport Brothers out there, they think that it's really bad news to bring your wife or your fiance to the United States. Um, it's kind of like bringing them over here and, and then they're going to get poisoned by the sea of modern women. And while I can understand that, the truth is uh, long distance relationships are never good. They have a lot uh, against them. And um, it's, it's actually just not the way that I wanted to live this next chapter of my life with my wife. I didn't want to have to take a, a long haul flight every time I wanted to see her which would only amount to maybe twice a year. So no, we're here, we, we are together every day. We spend our days together, our nights together. We sleep in the same bed. Um, I take her to school. She comes, we, comes with me shopping. She's come with me to work sometimes. So this is how I, I think it has to be. So anyway, this is a quick video uh, because I've missed my last video, but um, there's been a lot of things going on, a lot of good things going on, and then some eh, chaotic things as well. Number one is um, Mia. She put the pedal to the metal and she crammed in six weeks and she won her GED equivalency diploma and she graduated. That's right. She took six weeks. She crammed for every individual course. She studied, took the practice test, and then she took the test. She passed each of the tests on the first try. And on, out of the math test, she got 19 out of 20 questions right. And she did this in an expedited, expedited time frame so that she could graduate in uh, May with the other students who had been studying for six months to be here. So good going, my baby. I'm very proud of her. And not to mention, um, not just one graduation, but I had a second graduation, and that's my middle daughter graduated college, and she had a massive ceremony uh, at the uh, Anaheim, um, no, the, the Angels, the California Angels Stadium, Angel Stadium. We are at uh, Angel Stadium, getting ready to go to my daughter and my, uh, not Mara, Simone's graduation from Cal State University, Long Beach. Thank you, sir. Uh, my ex-wife was there, her uh, family, uh, Nia came to help celebrate, my kids were there, and it was a great, big, wonderful uh, event. And congratulations to my daughter, Simone, for getting her degree in linguistics with a specialization in American Sign Language. Simone. Yeah. And next on the horizon is some very big changes I made with YouTube. Um, actually, I've started two other channels, and I'll talk about those at a later date because they are completely different from this one. But uh, you know that I've started this channel, and I began talking about the K-1 visa process. Uh, the K-1 visa process, also called the fiancé visa, was the thing that I spoke about for five years because that's how long it took from the date that we first met to when she flew and I picked her up at the airport, it took us five years for Nia and I to get together. So K-1 visa, the uh, adjustment of status, the uh, USCIS, all of those things was like, that's what we lived and breathed in. But now we're done with all of that. 
Nia has her green card. She's got her employment document. She's got her GED. She, she's done. We're done with the USCIS until two years from now when we have to take the permanent uh, green card interview. So it's been quiet and we've been bored and we've had to find something else to do and occupy our time. So I've spent a lot of time on YouTube. And at the beginning of this video, I spoke about the uh, password privilege situation. And um, part of what, part of my transition or my transformation to a password brother was honestly watching some other password brothers on YouTube. But one of the things that I'm starting to realize is that I really don't want to follow the path that these other guys have laid out for themselves and for their significant others. And by that, I mean, I'm a normal guy. I'm a regular guy. Um, I'm not into clubs. I'm not into drinking. I'm not into the party scene. Um, you know, I'm more at home, most at home when I'm with my kids, with my wife, and we're doing family-oriented things. But a lot of the Passport Brothers that I've been following on YouTube are significantly younger than I am. So they're really speaking to a, gener a different generation, which I totally understand. It's just not me. So uh, I just started to see a lot of uh, YouTube thumbnails with, you know, big booties and little thongs. And this, this just like asses over here and this big over here. And, this, and it's just everywhere and that's not my thing um because i would never have my wife walk out to a yacht party in a thong where you know her right and left butt cheeks are there for anybody to see i would never do that um not saying that it's anything against these guys but it's just not my thing so i made up my mind that um i was not the audience that these folks were speaking to. So I was going to move on and, you know, find my own way. And essentially, there's nobody in my space um, because I'm not yet retired. So there's a lot of guys out there who are talking about retirement um, and they're already in the Philippines or they're already in Thailand or they're already in any of these other places in Southeast Asia and they have a, a wife and some of them have children or second family, and they have um, land and homes and things like that. I'm not there yet. I'm not retired yet. Um, Nia and I still have quite a bit of building to do. Um, but I'm not some young cat who's out there thinking that it's cool to fly to Thailand once or twice a year, meet someone, lay down with them and then come back and then do it all over again with somebody else in the next year. That's not my thing. So right now there's, there's not a lot of people in my space. Um, so I figured I might as well occupy it. So I'm talking to all of the men who probably who like me have had a family and now their kids are growing up and then they surprisingly found themselves married again, like I did. I'm married again. And now I'm starting the second phase of my life, which is, you know, building, building something with my wife, but it's also planning and preparing for retirement. Um, because I would like to retire at 62. Uh, and yeah, I've spent a lot of time looking at retirement channels and investment channels. And most people in the United States say that the best age to retire is at 62, particularly if you have some side hustles going on that will help supplement your Social Security income. So I, I have a good idea of what my Social Security income will be, monthly income will be when I'm 62, 63, 64, 65, whatever. 
uh, whatever the time comes that I ultimately decide to retire. So I have that in mind. And then, of course, I've got these other side hustles that are going to be based on um, the creative aspect of my soul and my heart, uh, which is writing and um, dabble in a little bit of um, filmmaking. So I've, I've spent some time making independent films, I've spent some time writing for television, and I've spent a, a, you know, some time uh, like poetry and verse and prose and that kind of spoken word stuff. So I'm mixing all of those things together in this new facet of my life. So I'm not I'm not the, the, the young passport brother who hasn't really defined his goals yet. He's just having fun. And I'm not the older passport brother who has already settled down in his retirement life with his new family. I'm there in the middle. And, it, and that middle uh, can be small or it can be very, very big, depending on you know the age range and um, you know, basically your age at heart, because I know how old I am, but I also know how old I feel. I also know how old I look and how I get along with you know people younger than me and older than me, that whole thing. So these are all of the things that are going on in my life right now. Um, and I'm just going to speak from the heart, speak to you about the K-1 visa process, the adjustment of status process, the OG passport brother path, uh, process, the fact that I will never, ever, ever permanently live in Thailand because it's too dangerous. I just won't do it. Everything I've seen as I'm thinking about retirement in Southeast Asia, everything that I've seen about Thailand scares me. I've spent enough time in Brooklyn and the Bronx and Queens, where I was born and raised, far Rockaway. I spent enough time looking over my shoulder, wondering about this car coming by. I'm, I'm not going to do it in my old age. I refuse to. So I'm looking at places like Vietnam, like Singapore, and Singapore is very expensive, I understand that, uh, and like some other places where the penalty, the penalty for crimes is so severe that folks are thinking twice about doing it. So, Ellen, bring me his head. And that's the kind of place I want to be. So uh, my retirement focus is Vietnam, Singapore, and then some other well-off places in Southeast Asia. I know a lot of Southeast Asia is growing, it's developing, and there's a lot of things that uh, can, you know, a lot of things happening. And, you know, Vietnam is going to be the next Taiwan. Um, I don't know if you're my age, do you remember looking at toys and all of your toys said made in Taiwan? Um, and that's how a lot of the countries in Southeast Asia turned themselves around. They became manufacturing hubs. That's how Singapore changed itself around. It became a manufacturing hub for the world, and they used that influx of money and those jobs and severe penalties about doing bad shit to turn the economy around. And now it's one of the richest nations in the world. So these are all of the things that I think about, I plan on, I, I um, you know, focus on, I, uh, I dream about, and it's what I'm working hard on. And um, this YouTube channel is going to be a part of that. So I welcome you to, to join me um, in this new adventure. Uh, I'll still talk more, talk some about my K-1 visa uh, process and how that uh, journey changed my life, but uh, it also allowed me to pivot and uh, change the direction that I was going to one, find love, two, find companionship, and three, find another purpose to get up in the morning and you know somebody else to work for. So um, join me, please. I've got a lot of information to share. I've been in so many different industries. Um, I like to share all of that with you and, and help you, if you're like me, 
you know, get some focus and, and prepare for the next stage of your life. So again, final time, please join me. Please leave a comment and I will promise to get to your comments within the first 48 hours of releasing this video. Um, please, if you like what you heard, uh, 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 drop a comment or a thumbs up. And of course, if you subscribe, you'll help me get to uh, a thousand subscribers and then we can take this thing to the next level. So thank you very much. I appreciate you, appreciate your wife, appreciate your significant other, and I'll see you in the next one. Deuces.